the most news in the morning. CNN's American Morning, weekday, 6 a.m. Eastern. There is also a very real threat of more eruptions in Iceland. To help us understand how unpredictable the situation is, R.B. Trombley joins us live from Phoenix this morning. He is the lead volcanologist and director of the International Volcano Research Center. Good morning to you, R.B. Good morning, Jim and Karen. It's nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. And it doesn't look like we have any volcanoes behind you there, but uh, appreciate you making time for us. Uh, I guess the big question that a lot of people have uh, this morning is essentially, you know, how long is this going to go on? I mean, this this could go on for a while. Well, that is the magic question, uh, yeah. isn't it? Uh, most volcanoes, when they erupt, uh, will erupt for a day or two. Some erupt for a week or two. Others uh, for a month or two. And this particular uh, volcano... Uh, has erupted, uh, last erupted in 1821 uh, on uh, mm. December the 19th, and it stopped erupting uh, on January 19th of uh, 1823. So that was uh, two years, uh, basically, uh, this one uh, lasted. But I don't think that it will uh, erupt that long in this particular case. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about the fact that it's sort of hit the airline industry very hard right now. They're losing uh, hundreds of millions a day as uh, traffic is stopped in the air across uh, the continents. But uh, they're eager to get their planes running again, and they say that they've run these test flights without passengers and that they've been fine. Uh, What are some of the hazards of the volcanic ash that these planes go through, and do you think that these test flights will show that it is okay to continue air traffic? Uh, to answer your last statement first, the answer is yes. Uh, I think the test flights are, are good. I'm an ex-pilot myself, and um, so I'm uh, used to uh, listening to these uh, types of scenarios. But uh, the what happens, the ash gets into the turbines of the engine, and sometimes the, uh, it's made up of particulates and rocks and small particles and so forth, and it clogs up the engines, and with the heat sometimes even forms a little glassy uh, uh, nature in there and it'll actually shut the engines down. It, it happens, it's happened a few times. Fortunately, they've uh, been able to restart the engines, but that's basically what happens with respect to uh, aircraft. And then, and then you can have uh, effects uh, from uh, agriculture and animals and even people uh, from air for the ash uh, in the air and so forth. So RB, in your mind, the precautions that are being taken right now are not over the top, or are, are not unwarranted? No, not at all. In fact, uh, I think they're erring on the, on the side of uh, passenger safety, as it should be. And no, I don't think they're going over the wall at all. In fact, I just uh, was watching the CNN a little earlier today, and they said that the test flights did turn out to be okay, and that they are probably going to increase the flights to about 30% maybe today. Right, and so you think that's a good move? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, it's. I, I understand they're need for a a precaution on the safety side but as things look like they're okay then i think they can resume the flights and i would predict within a week or so well maybe even a few days it'll be back up to full scheduling and and and, uh, you know the other thing that is so fascinating about this is just the the sheer scope i mean we've seen those those uh, photographs from space and and it's just unbelievable to see nature at work here I guess what 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 do you think when you when you look at this, and 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 I guess you're just in awe. I mean, what, what do you take away from this particular eruption and how much? I mean, I, you don't want to be impressed by how much havoc we we have from all of this, but I mean, it is unbelievable what Mother Nature can do. Oh yes, uh, it is, uh, and and this particular eruption is not really that big of an eruption, uh, per se. Uh, but uh, they are spectacular. They're, uh, p- uh, volcanoes are very much like people. By that I mean everyone is different. Uh, they all uh, have different eruptive patterns. They have different eruption lengths and so forth. And, Especially uh, when I haven't had my coffee in the morning. If I, they, oh, yeah. if I can throw that in there, RB. That is yes, true. Uh, that is true. Yeah. You <laughs> I should know see exactly the ashy spews mean. in the morning and you wouldn't believe it. It's a health concern for everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> But at any rate, yes, uh, they, they are all different, and uh, I've been working on volcanoes for about 45 years now, and uh, we actually do a lot more forecasting is our main forte, and our real concern right now is not necessarily the ash, uh, although it is uh, problemsome for the airlines right now, but we're really more kind of keeping an eye on the volcano next door, which is Katla.
Right. That, uh, that's one we're kind of keeping a very close eye on. And five and bucks if, if you can pronounce the, uh, yeah, the volcano that's the, erupting right now, the, sir. Go ahead. Yes, it, Give us the pronouncer. It's, it's called... Uh, oh, no, you can't read, sir. I'm not. I'm just uh, remembering. Uh, oh, okay, I just, just kind of got my Icelandic down a little there bit. There you go. But, uh, Eja is the beginning. Eja. Eja Volik. That's it? Eja, Eja Volik. It took up the whole oh, page man. on ours. <laughs> we got the wrong yeah. pronouncer. All right. Well, it was great to talk to you this morning. I feel Are much better now. Me too. I can say that. that that's not that bad. Eja uh, Volik. Right. All right. Well, thanks for being thanks, with RB. us this morning. Fascinating stuff for sure. Thanks.